When removing the airbox from one of these T5 variants of Volvos, they put these engines in a bazillion different models. You have a couple screws to pull out the air filter. That whole thing slides up and out. You've got one more pin on the in or one more hook on the inside and two on the outside that you have to depress. And then the snorkel usually snaps in on the other side. So as much as people complain about how hard they are to work on, meaning how hard they are to change belts, these are actually fairly easy cars to work on and you have a lot of good access. I'm in the process of taking the airbox off because there's a couple things that I'm trying to do with it. So in order to get the rest of the airbox off, basically what's left for me to do here is to take off the, I think these are T30s or T40s. I think these are T40s maybe that are holding the ECU to the airbox. And then once that's disconnected, the whole thing will pop off and I can get access to, or a little better access to the intake manifold where the injectors are underneath and see what I can do about replacing the injectors since one of them seems to be stuck open. And it's kind of foolish to replace one only and not do all of them at the same time. When removing the airbox, you really got to yank on those three mounting points. Those go into different rubber grommets here, here, and here. And they sit in there rather nicely and rather snugly until you go to pull it off. So now we have so much more room for activities. The keys that we're going to try and get to are trying to take off some of these bolts up underneath that actually go to, and it feels like I can actually get to all of them, which is nice. Um, up underneath, now that you can see them, these bolts up underneath that attach the intake manifold, the upper plenum to the rail, or to the lower intake manifold, because I need to be able to get to this fuel rail to replace injectors. And that's kind of a bit of a pain to get to, but I want to disconnect the intake. Uh, this is coming from the intercooler, so this is the charge pipe coming from the intercooler. These are all rubber on these, which is kind of nice. They're pretty durable, not going to wear out real easily. And I'm going to leave this throttle body connected, and I may even do the belt job and some of the other stuff while I've got this out. And before I go putting everything together, I'm also going to go ahead and do the oil change while I'm in there because that will help. I may consider, uh, looks like this housing is actually in really, really good shape. So I think I'm going to continue reusing this housing. But if I have to do a couple other things, then it might be worthwhile to replace some other hoses. Those coolant hoses look okay at the moment to me. There's no real swelling. They're not real hard and crystallized, so they're okay at the moment. So I'm probably not going to replace those. The lower charge pipe from the turbo is still soft and compliant, uh, really well secured. So I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to have to be real careful with this hard line. I'm going to have to kind of pull it down and out. This is a this is an evaporative line for something. Um, evap canister, solenoid, or something over here. And we have a check valve going on, so this might even be related and tied into their PCV system. Uh, I don't know offhand, but I'll have to be careful of that connection as I go to separate this intake manifold. I don't need to get it completely out. I just need to get it to slide kind of generally this way out of my way so that I can get to the injectors. So what fun we're having today. A couple other important things are disconnecting the rebreather for, this is probably actually for the PCV system. Um, this is a quick connect fitting, so you just push it in and pull the uh, fitting out. You want to kind of depressurize the rail by hitting the center pin on that Schrader valve. Looks like this is already depressurized, which is good. We see some evidence at the top here of some fuel, which is a bit unusual. That seems to suggest to me that this guy just cracked and failed internally or something and was shooting fuel everywhere. None of the others have that issue. They're all clear. Another step is you have a little T15 screw right here on a clip 
that'll pop off and that's your feed line that's your pressurized feed line coming into the car I don't know yet if I'm gonna have to disconnect this guy or not I might have to just to get enough flexibility and mobility to get it out uh, this hard line this evap line you want to take out of its tube holder here by kind of pulling it down where the bend makes the material narrower right in here and pulling it out so that it's got freedom to move when you're messing around with the intake this is flexible at this side and then once that's done I've got all of the connectors disconnected lay the harness over there out of the way and I'm gonna start disconnecting the bolts I'm also gonna disconnect here at the intake tube uh, maybe I won't maybe I'll just leave that in place and kind of pick this up and out of my way a little bit this will mean that I'll have to replace the upper intake manifold gasket more than likely um, unless it's o-rings and they're in good shape so I'll find that out here in a couple minutes but we have a couple bolts man the fuel smell here is serious all disconnected from uh, both at the throttle body from the charge pipe uh, and from the lower intake manifold it's a lot easier to actually get in and access these fuel injectors so this is really the only way to get at it and actually have complete access to be able to make sure that they're on squarely and securely so make sure that you remember disconnect your vacuum tube or your vacuum this is probably most of the time used as a vacuum reference if I were to guess since it's behind the throttle body and yeah that's the next step uh, take out the two bolts and then carefully work this out with all of the injectors and make sure you don't leave any of the o-rings behind and then if you're already going this far you might as well go ahead and replace them and here we are new injectors are in I'm gonna start locking fuel line back down do a couple other pieces I'm gonna clean very carefully this top surface so we have a clean surface to attach everything back to and put pieces together put the intake back on and that will allow me to test fire this and make sure that we're all functioning I'll have to bring over the injector harness again so do that now before I forget because uh, it's a lot easier than it sounds like to forget stuff like this here we are with the airbox back in place um, I'm leaving the computer off to the side right this instant and I'm not reconnecting some of the other pieces because I'm probably going to take the airbox out again uh, one more time during this job. So I uh, have all the connectors tight, even a couple vacuum ports at the back and the bolt at the back for support. Have all of my connections for the air tight. Most importantly, pull your rags out of all the places you've just been in. Keep stuff from getting sucked into the engine because it'll starve for air and not run and then you'll wonder why and feel pretty dumb. So um, I'm going to try and start it. I've got the connector back on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prime it several times and then I'm just going to go ahead and run it and hopefully our misfire is gone. Uh, we'll get the scanner on it and see how it's running. side it may have it may be burning off 
some of the extra cleaner. I'm gonna keep a careful eye on it and see what I can see. This should help tell me what else is going on with the turbo. Because we shouldn't be seeing lots of smoke back there. And just like that, it's time to end this video. We will, as you see, get this back up and running, but I wanted to give you guys a quick demo of exactly what that's going to look like. Hopefully you'll stick around with us along this journey and you'll get a chance to see just exactly what we do while we're in there. Do a couple other big maintenance items. I haven't found very many different videos out there on this particular topic, especially on P3 Volvos for some reason. People seem to complain that they're hard to work on, but seems pretty straightforward to me. And this was actually very easy to get back up and running. So stick around, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, especially so that you can comment below and tell me what a terrible mechanic I am. Thanks, and we'll catch you in the next one.